We're going to limit lodge gatherings to 50% of the venue. That's not going to be true for outdoor venues. And all of us have just got to make our decisions on whether or not you're comfortable going to something or not. That's your decision. And that was Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi announcing new restrictions on indoor events. We'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let's start with the latest coronavirus numbers being reported by the state. The health department is adding 2,611 new COVID infections today. More than 1,900 are on Oahu. Maui is adding more than 300. The Big Island has 156 and Kauai with 111. 33 cases are on Molokai and Lanai is adding 18. And now for more on those restrictions on Oahu, let's send it over to Jonathan. That's right, Ashley. The mayor slashing the capacity limit for large indoor events, but he says personal responsibility is still key to curbing the spread. I think it's all going to be tied to hospitalizations and seeing those come back down and having a sense of of calm, if you will. And, and what are, you know, we're more focused on hospitalizations and case counts. I have to be really clear here. There's a lot of shock and awe going on right now about case counts. And they're not as relevant as the hospitalizations. We've said that throughout. And while they do matter, a lot of people right now that are getting, we have 20% of our hospitalizations are incidental. People are going to the hospital for other reasons, getting swabbed and then finding out that they have COVID, which they didn't even know they had. So, you know, the case counts are somewhat misleading. So I think the real trigger thing is going to be the calm in our hospitals. That's where the concern is. Under the new capacity rules, effective Monday, all large indoor events with more than 1,000 people will be capped at 50%. The mayor and several healthcare leaders who joined him at today's media briefing noted that the Omicron variant produces milder symptoms, though it can still be very dangerous for those who are unvaccinated. Looking at 226, which is our COVID, total COVID hospitalization count today, you know, basically, you know, maybe 40 to 50 of those are COVID positive, but are not being actively treated for COVID. But again, we still have to take care of them. And we still have to take those precautions because they are COVID positive. At this news conference, the mayor also said he is not anticipating any changes to safe access Oahu. I was asked about that. We're not ready to add on uh, the third booster, if you will, to safe access Oahu in part because of safe travels. You know, we had uh, just heard the report yesterday. We had 6.8 million tourists come last year in 2021, despite our COVID issues. And that's a lot of people, but we know safe travels works, but there's a real inconsistency there. If in fact, that's not a mandate with the travels by the CDC and for us to do it locally, you know, with the number of people we have with two vaccines. So we're not ready to do that yet. And we're not ready yet to mandate boosters. In Chicago, the nation's third largest school district, classes were canceled today because of teachers' concerns over the latest surge. Bradley Blackburn explains. The CDC is warning hospital admissions and deaths will likely increase in the coming weeks as the record-breaking COVID surge continues. Military doctors, nurses, and EMTs are now in place assisting local hospital staff in states across the country with additional teams ready to, to deploy as needed. New hospital admissions in Miami-Dade, Florida are up 550% in just two weeks. Because of the surge, Chicago's public school teachers voted to switch to remote learning, prompting officials to cancel classes. Going into schools puts us at risk. Um, puts our students and families at risk. The CDC tried to clarify its guidance for people who test positive but are asymptomatic or mildly ill. The agency stopped short of requiring those people to get a negative test before ending isolation after five days. But it said if someone has, quote, access to a test and wants a test, they should use it. And those who test positive should isolate for another five days. If that test is negative, people really do need to understand that they must continue to wear their mask um, for those uh, extra five days. It all comes as the U.S. sees a shortage of rapid antigen tests nationwide. At this pharmacy in Denver, rapid tests are selling out on the same day the shipment comes in. We ended up selling through 600 within the business day. The federal government is launching a website for Americans to order free tests, but it won't be up and running until later this month. 
Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Hawaii has signed its first agreement with cruise lines to make port calls here and just in time. Carnival has a cruise sailing here due Sunday. The CDC said no U.S. cruise ship port call is permitted without explicit permission by the port. That agreement came yesterday and requires onboard testing and additional restrictions if needed. NCL signed the same terms and has a cruise ship due later this month. Developing news from the mainland now. At least 13 people have died after a fire tore through a Philadelphia apartment building. Dan Shinneman brings us the very latest details of what we know. The early morning fire moved quickly. I just heard about 6.30, I heard screams. Firefighters arrived at the three-story row house minutes later. Heavy smoke coming from the front of the building. Companies began an aggressive attack on the fire and in the process discovered that there were multiple fatalities. More than half the fatalities, children. I've been around for 30, 35 five years now and this is probably one of the worst fires I've ever been to. The building owned by the Philadelphia Housing Authority and authorities estimate some 26 people were spread over three floors. It's the holidays. I don't know if there's people coming visiting. I have no idea. Like at this time, like I said, like we're still working with the, with the authority. Last May, the building was inspected. Today, investigators say they did not find any working smoke detectors. I don't know if they were replaced or tampered with. We have no idea. A city must now cope with unimaginable tragedy. It's losing so many kids is just devastating. Investigators are still looking for what caused this fire that spread so swiftly and took so many lives. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. We have this update to pass along now. Two men accused of killing a Hawaii woman in Las Vegas appeared in court yesterday. Do you understand the charges, Mr. Ruby? Do you understand the charges, Mr. Carter? A judge confirmed felony murder charges for Jasani Carter and Jordan Ruby. 66-year-old Clarice Yamaguchi of Waipahu was shot in the neck during a purse snatching on New Year's Eve, according to police. The men are set to return to court on Monday. Well, there's this new state law that allows Hawaii residents 21 and older to carry a stun gun, but there's a lot of strict rules that go along with it. That's why we're going to bring in Casey Lund to explain. Aloha from Smart Training Hawaii here in Kalihi, a great resource if you want to educate yourself about the change in law and how to properly own and operate a taser. I'm with Raymond Craig, a former HPD officer. Raymond, I just want to give folks that are watching this an idea of kind of what they can expect if they actually want to use this tool for self-defense. Yeah, so after we go through a PowerPoint, we learn about our product itself, we'll come in here and we'll actually uh, fire one of these things. So everyone's going to have the opportunity to actually use a live uh, device and uh, to shoot this thing and learn the proper placement of Very how to use this. And Raymond, if uh, we can, can yes. we do a, a demonstration? This is uh, not live, yes. but we are going to show people kind of what to expect when they want to operate. And you have a live cartridge yes. and a live taser. Okay. So, well, yep. Safety first, always. Yes, sir. And then from there, this one's already loaded. It's ready to go. Okay. And all we need to do is push up on that switch. Now this thing is ready to go. The laser will tell you where we want to go, and that's perfect where we want to aim at. And we just slowly press that trigger. Whoa. Nice. No recoil. It's electric. Yes. Yeah. And so after you have uh, deployed the taser, the idea is that that stops a threat. Yes. After that, then you want to contact authorities and deal with the situation after that. Yes. Right? Um, just quickly before we go, where can people go to learn a little bit more about what you offer here and if they want to actually purchase and learn, um, what's the best way to do that? Uh, first, uh, taser.com. There's a lot of information on there, and it'll actually have the instructors and authorized vendors that would be um, for the state of Hawaii. Uh, if you also go to my website, smarttraininghi.com, uh, one T, and um, you can actually sign up for a class, and there's some good information on that webpage also. Raymond Craig, thank you so much for spending a little time yeah. teaching us. We've really just touched the surface of, of all that there is to know about tasers, about self-defense. Again, you should really try to educate yourself if you do want to use that tool. One of the best ways, again, smarttraininghigh.com.
hawaiinewsnow.com. You can also find all the information at hawaiinewsnow.com. For now, we'll send things back to you. Tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary of the deadly U.S. Capitol attack, and joining us now is the host of Full Court Press and Hawaii News Now's chief national political analyst, Greta Van Susteren. Thanks for being with us, Greta. Now, what does the White House and Congress have planned to mark the anniversary tomorrow? Well, Ashley, you're right. It's the White House and Congress because former President Trump was going to have a press conference at Mar-a-Lago, but he has taken that off the table, and he's going to make his remarks about it at his upcoming rally in Arizona. Now turning to the White House and the Capitol, as President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris will be going to the 16 blocks from the White House to the Capitol, and they will be giving, the, and, and President uh, Biden will be giving remarks basically about the democracy and, and peaceful transition power. Um, and we don't have a whole lot of details about what his speech is, but that's pretty much what we expect. And then Congress is going to have a prayer vigil. They're going to have testimonials from members of Congress who were there a year ago and uh, perhaps, you know, were, got uh, terrorized because they might have been really close to what was going on. Some, some members of Congress might not have been in the hall when it happened, but the, we'll hear from the ones who were. And then, and then they're going to have a panel with uh, two presidential um, scholars, uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin and John Meacham. So there'll be a panel discussion. I imagine that's about the, whole, the role of democracy, the role of you know, transition of power, and a little bit about sort of the rules, you know, in terms of you know how we elect uh, how we elect members of con or members of the uh, how we elect uh, presidents. So. That's what we can expect tomorrow. It will be live streamed. Um, it's probably not going to have anybody there because we're sort of under a COVID uh, hood here in uh, D.C. I mean, it's pretty bad. A lot of things are closed down. They're not closed down, but they discourage people from participating. Right. Yeah, good to know about that. And, you know, let's talk about the Build Back Better bill. Has there been any progress on that? What's the latest? Boy, that uh, what Build Back Better? That's what we're seeing here in Washington, $1.7 trillion bill. The holdup is, is uh, Senator Manchin from West Virginia, a Democrat. He thinks it's way too expensive. He focuses most, mostly on the uh, earned child tax credit because that, is the, that helps people who have up to $400,000. Um, and, and what he thinks is that people who make an income of $400,000 don't need that extra help from other taxpayers. So he's fighting with his fellow Democrats about it. But mo what's most interesting about it, while well, that's a significant, that, well, that does hold it up, um, oftentimes there are negotiations going on behind closed doors, like maybe they've negotiated down to you know 300 or 200 or some other number. Uh, but uh, Senator Manchin said yesterday that no negotiations are going forward, which is why I say what Build Back Better um, bill, because uh, it seems to be dead in the water, at least for the meantime. So uh, I, I don't think we're going to hear much about it. But you know, this is Washington. You know, overnight things could change very quickly. I will say this though. The reason why the Democrats, specifically uh, President uh, Biden, does not want to reduce that amount from families for four, who have $400,000 income to something less, like 300 or 200, is because that credit expired in December. And if they, re if they reenact it at some lower number, that means that taxpayers in that higher income bracket, let's say between 200 and 400,000, now that they don't get this tax credit, their taxes go up. And remember, President Biden said no taxes for people under, who are making four hundred thousand dollars or less. So that would be a that would be a campaign promise broken. So, yeah, that's, that's the right. fight between the two sides. Yeah, and speaking of Democrats, they're also trying to get a voting rights bill passed. What's happening with that? Well, there's, that certainly is, uh, that's also probably dead in the water. That will have a vote. But the problem with it is that there's a lot of disagreement. I mean, there's a lot of disagreement on if one of the provisions in it is minimum standards for voting. And it'd be things like mail-in voting or early voting. And different people have different ideas of how it should be done. So they, they can't agree on that. Uh, plus, it would enact a national holiday for, for voting. But there's a lot of disagreement between Republicans and Democrats. And even within the Republican Party, there's a disagreement about what should be done, and some within the Democratic Party. But here's the interesting thing is that Senator Schumer, um, what he, they need 60 votes in order, in order to advance the legislation and get something called cloture. Well, they need 10 Republicans to get to 60 votes. So this thing is, it, it may get, a, it may get on a, a vote on the floor for show, but it's not going to get advanced for a vote on the actual bill. It will not get advanced so it has a vote on the actual bill. So that probably in its current form is dead. All right, Greta, thank you so much for keeping us updated with everything happening on Capitol Hill. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. And don't forget, you can watch Greta's show, Full Court Press, right here on your great TV television stations in Hawaii. It's going to be on KGB and KHNL that airs on this weekend. Taking you live outside. Wow, what a difference a day looks, makes, the way this live picture looks.
because it is gorgeous out there today. A few clouds in the sky, but I can't wait to get outside and not get rained on for a chance. Let's turn it over to Guy Hoggy, who has an update on those conditions and also our surf. Finally, things are drying up, although there are a few leftover showers over Maui and uh, Oahu. They're not going to amount to very much. And with the light winds today, we could see some afternoon clouds and a few afternoon showers. Now, as the weather settles down, the surf is ramping up. It's going to be very, very big by this afternoon on a north-northwest swell. In fact, by tomorrow, who knows, Dahui's backdoor shootout could run on that building swell. High surf advisories are posted. An even bigger swell is due this weekend. So the weather's settling down. In fact, it's going to be much drier by tomorrow. Although with these light winds, we could see some afternoon showers for a handful of spots, but nothing widespread. And these light winds are going to continue into next week. The Grammys are being postponed for a second year in a row because of COVID. It's because of the impact the virus has had in Los Angeles, where the show is broadcast from. The 63rd annual Grammy Awards, originally set to take place on January 31st, will now be broadcast March 14th on CBS. New at noon, the CES is back in Las Vegas. Danya Bacchus joins us now with a preview of some of the gadgets and devices being shown off. Hundreds of companies are on hand showing off new gadgets and devices, but with COVID cases rising, many large corporations chose to stay home and give virtual presentations, including General Motors. The Silverado EV. GM's all-electric Chevy Silverado can travel up to 400 miles on a charge. Besides a nearly six-foot-long bed, there's also a trunk in the front and a brand-new display loaded with features. How are cars and trucks becoming more high-tech? Auto manufacturers have kind of realized that they create technology. Consumers really expect not just cars that are efficient, but cars that are high tech. CBSN tech reporter Dan Patterson says it's not just car companies unveiling vehicles. Sony, best known for electronics and gaming, showed off Vision S, an electric SUV that could be available down the road. The company is even testing remote control capability in the sedan version of the Vision S. Cadillac's vision of the future is the interspace concept car. The fully self-driving vehicle would offer pivoting seats and a huge front display for entertainment. Hyundai has an eye on a future that involves personal mobility. The company wants to develop pods that take passengers from home, down the road, and even to a mother shuttle. It's too early for a timeline on when this concept might become a reality. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, here's what the internet is talking about today. And one of our favorite topics on This Is Now, of course, food. We're learning where and when Chick-fil-A will be opening in Hawaii. The first location is set to open in mid-2022 on Ho'okele Street in Kahului on Maui. The next two locations will open on Oahu late this year. One will be in Ala Moana Center, the other on South Baratania Street near the Goodwill Store. And the final location will be in Kapolei along Kuala Kaki Parkway. Now, what did you find today, Jonathan? Oh, making me hungry, Ashley. Thanks for that update. Everyone's been wondering about that. You also mentioned the Grammys a moment ago and that they're postponed. We also just learned that Sundance's film festival is also being moved online. So a lot of changes coming to those big Hollywood events. All right, moving on. Let's talk about some of the other things the internet is talking about. And I found this interesting story. Uh, did you know that younger generations are paying more than three times as much in ATM and overdraft fees when compared to baby boomers? Yeah, a new survey found that baby boomers pay about $2 a month in bank fees, while Gen Xers ages 42 to 57 pay twice that amount, and millennials pay even more. $16 a month on average. Got to avoid those bank fees. Wanted to also check our markets real fast. Here are your closing numbers. The Dow Jones down more than 392 points. That's 1% of the Dow Jones average there. All right. A lot of people are still talking about the holiday returns they have to do. And we have this information coming from CBS. Well, the holiday season is behind us. That return season certainly is not. Yeah, UPS is reporting that one in four Americans expect to make a post-holiday return and more than 40% plan to bring back 
or send something back. At least three items. You know, Northeasterners are most likely to make returns. That's interesting. And folks in the West and Midwest are least likely to hang on to those gift receipts. Huh. Who knew? All right, turning to good news now. Jim Mendoza has an awesome interview to share with us with a news anchor in New Zealand who's really breaking barriers. On Christmas Day, veteran New Zealand journalist Orini Kaipara made history. She is her country's first news anchor to host a primetime show, sporting ancestral markings on her face. I love my muko, I love my culture. The chin tattoo isn't a publicity stunt. The intricate ink tells her family's story. It represents the Māori language, ultimately. That's why it's sitting right on my mouth. That's why I speak Māori. It's, it's a reminder. Kaipara got the facial markings three years ago and debuted them on Māori News. Now she's on the national broadcasts. It never, ever crossed my mind about what would having a mokokauai do to my employment opportunities. I did have reservations about how the public would react to me, you know, being on screen in every home across the country. She also has traditional body tattoos and she delivers her reports bilingually, adding her native tongue to the stories she tells. Ones, while others enjoyed a day at the beach, kitātahi. My first language is te reo Māori. And my purpose in life is to re help revitalize Māori language, which is still listed as an endangered language. The reaction across New Zealand has been very positive, and her story has gone global. <laughs> it's really overwhelming. She hopes to inspire others in her country to celebrate their culture. It's not something that should be, you know, vanished back to the history books. No, absolutely not. We exist, and we exist because um, we're Māori. Pure and simple. Kaipara wears her facial tattoo with pride, and it means something, and that is making a mark. Jim Mendoza, Hawaii News Now. Awesome story, Jim Mendoza. Don't forget Jim has a podcast called Tell Me a Story. You can find it anywhere you get your podcast. Got to talk about one more thing, and you still have a little bit of time to call your friends on the mainland and maybe have them buy you a ticket. Yep, we're talking about the Powerball, and one lucky person could make history tonight. The lottery jackpot is worth $630 million. Yep, $630 mil. That's the largest, seventh largest jackpot ever. The seventh largest jackpot ever. Wow, that's a lot of money. And it's taking place tonight, the drawing is. Yep, it has been three months and 39 drawings since someone last won the big jackpot. You know, the odds of winning this aren't very good. One in 292 million. Still worth a shot. Of course, we don't have Powerball here in the islands. You guys, that's going to do it for This Is Now. On this Wednesday, we've made it halfway through the week. And I want to leave you with something just oh so cute. Some polar bears at Oregon Zoo having some fun with a tub of ice. <laughs>